All right, so the first thing that we need to talk about before we move into boss protection is the different types of boss arrangements that we can find in a power system. So buses exist throughout the power system wherever two or more circuits need to be interconnected. So it's sort of a common point of interconnection of two or more circuits in a power system. So for example, if we had a transformer that's going to feed several feeders at a distribution substation, then we'll have a bus that kind of connects the transformer to the different feeders. So it's sort of a point of interconnection between two or more circuits or two or more parts of the power system. Now bus faults can cause severe system disturbances and that's because we have multiple sources that will feed the fault. So bus faults typically have very high fault current magnitudes and therefore they're very severe in the system. Now as I mentioned there are many different bus configurations, each one with its own pros and cons and in this lecture we're going to take a look at three of them in particular, which are the three ones that I have over here on the screen. We're going to talk about what's called a single bus single breaker, which is oftentimes also called a straight bus configuration. We're going to talk about the double bus double breaker configuration and the breaker in half configuration. So let's talk about the single bus single breaker. And again, this is sometimes also called a straight bus configuration, which is this one over here on the top left. So this one is the most economical and simple design and is used particularly at low voltage levels, in other words, in distribution substations or at subtransmission substations. So for example, at a distribution substation, we may have something like, let's say that we have this single bus single breaker, or again, this is also called a straight bus configuration. We might have, let's say, two transformers. So let me draw them over here. We have one transformer over here that connects to this breaker, another transformer over here. And then we might have, let's say, two feeders coming out of these breakers over here. So this might be like a feeder one, feeder two, and let's call this T1, T2. So transformers T1 and T2. So again, as you can see, this is the most simple design that we can have for a bus. Essentially, we're connecting all the different sources to one common point of interconnection. Now the downside to this type of configuration is that let's say that we have a fault here in the bus. So now we have to clear all the breakers that are connected to that bus and therefore we're going to interrupt service to all the different feeders that are connected to that bus. So again in this example if we have a fault over here and let me write it over here fault. To isolate that fault we need to trip this breaker, this breaker, this breaker and this breaker. So in this example, for example, if this was a distribution substation, we're essentially going to interrupt the service to feeder one and feeder two. So this is a simple design, but it's very limiting in the sense that if you have a bus fault, now you need to trip all the breakers that are connected to that bus and there is no redundancy. So whatever is being fed from that bus is going to be interrupted by that bus fault. But then, of course, because this is a simple design, it's usually the most economical one. So that's the pro of this type of bus configuration. All right, so let me go ahead and erase all of this. And one way that we can get around that limitation of a straight bus configuration is to use this other configuration, which is called a double bus double breaker configuration. So let me zoom in a little bit more and let's move this up a little bit. So a double bus double breaker configuration is a very flexible design where a bus fault on either bus will not interrupt service to any of the lines that are connected to that bus. So for example, in here again, we're going to have two different buses now. So we're going to have bus one over here, bus two over here, and these would be feeders or transmission lines. So let's call this feeder one and feeder two. So now, for example, let's say that we have a bus fault over here at bus number one. Now all we need to trip is this breaker and this breaker, and we do not need to trip this breaker or this breaker. So now by doing this, then we can continue feeding feeder number one and feeder number two via bus two. So we would have to trip the breakers that are connected to bus one, but not the breakers that are connected to bus two. And in that way, we can continue to feed feeders one and two and take bus one out of service for that fault. Now, likewise, for example, let's say that we wanted to take one of the two buses out for maintenance or that we wanted to do maintenance, let's say, on this breaker. 
we can do the same thing. We can isolate one part of the substation, so one bus, and then we can continue to feed the other, or rather, we can continue to feed the feeders through the other bus in the substation. So again, this is what's called a double bus double breaker configuration. And of course, now we have more breakers per transmission line or per feeder. So for example, for feeder one, we have this breaker over here and this breaker over here. So this, of course, is a more expensive design, but of course, you're gaining the flexibility now that you can isolate one bus without having to interrupt the service to the feeder or the transmission line. Now, as far as bus protection goes, and this is something that I didn't mention over here, but typically we would have, let's say, I'm gonna use an SEL487B as an example, which is a commonly used bus differential protection relay here in the United States. So now we would have these current transformers connected to that protective relay. So in the straight bus configuration, because there's only one bus, we're gonna have only one protective relay. Or typically you might have a primary and backup, but there's only one bus to protect in this straight bus configuration. Now, if you come down here for the double bus, double breaker configuration, now you're gonna to need to have two bus differential protective relays. One for bus one, so it will connect to the, these two CTs. So this, again, would be your relay. And one separate one for bus number two now. So this would be really, let's call this really one and really two over here. So again, now you have, not only do you have more breakers, you also need to have more protection, one for each bus in the substation. So again, you're gaining the flexibility of having two separate buses, but now your design is gonna be more complex and more expensive, of course. Now, sometimes this expense is justified if you have critical loads or if you have a higher voltage system. So typically a double bus, double breaker configuration would be used in, let's say a distribution substation if the feeders need to have some type of redundancy for the feed. So if it's an important feeder or it's usually also used in high voltage transmission lines or rather high voltage transmission substations. All right, and the last one that I wanna talk about is this one which is called a breaker and a half configuration which is over here on the top right. So this one, in a sense, is similar to the double bus, double breaker configuration in the sense that it is a very flexible design as well. Now, in this case, we're gonna have three different breakers in each bay of the substation. So this right here is what we would call a bay. And so we have, in this case, two bays for this substation. So now we have, again, three different breakers per bay, which makes this scheme a little bit more complex. So for example, now for this feeder, so we're gonna call this feeder one, let's call this feeder two, feeder three and feeder four. And in here as well, we have two buses, so bus one and bus two down here. So now this breaker, and this breaker connect to bus one. So the bus differential protection is gonna use these two different CTs. So we're gonna have a relay over here. Same thing down here, we're gonna have a relay over here. And these two would be bus relays. So let me just write over here bus and bus. But now this middle breaker is shared between the protections of feeder one and feeder two, for example. So feeder one would use this CT and this CT. So this would be relay, let's call it relay F1 for feeder one. So we'd use those two CTs and same thing for feeder two, we would use this CT and this CT. So relay F2 for feeder two. But now this middle breaker again is sort of shared between feeders one and two. So for example, if there's a fault on feeder one, we're gonna have to trip this breaker and this breaker. If there's a fault on feeder two, so over here, we still have to trip this breaker and this breaker to isolate the fault. So that's why this configuration is called a breaker and a half configuration because the middle breaker is sort of shared between the two feeders that are connected to that bay. So we have essentially for every feeder, one breaker and half of the other one, the middle one. Now again, in here, just like for the double bus, double breaker configuration, we have a very flexible design where a fault at either bus, so we have a fault here at bus one, 
we don't need to take any of the feeders out of service and we don't need to take the other bus out of service either and just as i mentioned before also you can take either bus out for maintenance if you want to and still be able to feed all the different feeders in that substation now this scheme though is a little bit even more complex than the double bus double breaker configuration because in a double bus double breaker configuration Let's move this up a little bit again. You're going to have typically relays that control the operation of every breaker. But because this configuration is symmetrical, the control for this breaker and for this breaker is going to be the exact same usually. So the protective relay is going to have the same type of operation for those two breakers. Now for a breaker and a half configuration, now for a breaker and a half configuration, the operations of the breakers now are not symmetrical. Remember that this breaker over here and this breaker as well as this breaker and this one over here, all the breakers that are connected to the buses. Those are gonna have similar controls for them, but the ones in the middle, because they're being shared by the two different feeders that connect to that breaker, those are gonna have a different type of configuration and different type of control than the bus connected breakers. So now you're gonna have an even more complex protective relay scheme for your substation overall. Now, the good thing about this is that you can have a large number of transmission lines or feeders connected to this substation by using the breaker and a half scheme. You can see over here that for the double bus double breaker configuration, we had two feeders and four breakers. For the breaker and a half scheme, because we're sharing the middle breaker, we don't have to double the amount of breakers that we have in our substation, but we can double the amount of feeders that we have in the substation. So again, for the double plus double breaker configuration, we had four breakers and two feeders. And for the breaker and a half configuration, we have six breakers. So not double four, but we have double the feeders, or again, this could also be transmission lines. So we've doubled the amount of transmission lines or feeders that we can connect to our substation without having to double the amount of breakers. So it saves up a little bit of money but again, the protective scheme is now going to be more complex because you have that middle breaker that's being shared by the two different transmission lines or feeders connected to the same bay. All right, so these are some of the most widely used configurations in distribution or transmission substations. There are many other ones that I haven't touched on, but these are the ones that we're going to be focusing on in this course.